The Boston Bruins fell prey to the old trap game last night in Tampa, losing to the Lightning and keeping the door open for a first round matchup between those two clubs come the playoffs. Let's get into it on a brand new episode of Locked On Boston Bruins. Your Locked On Bruins, your daily podcast on the Boston Bruins, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, Bruins fans, and welcome back to the Locked On Boston Bruins podcast. I'm your host, Ian McLaren, and this is a daily show where we discuss all things spoke to be. Today is Thursday, March 28th, and I want to thank you so much for making Lockdown Bruins part of your daily routine, free and available on your favorite podcast app and on YouTube. Please do smash that subscribe button so that each new episode is automatically added to your feeds for you to download, listen, and enjoy. We're part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day, and today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $200 if your bet wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOn to get started. We're going to break down last night's loss to the Tampa Bay Lightning, update the power rankings, and preview Saturday's game against the Washington Capitals. Tomorrow is, of course, Good Friday, a holiday. I'll be taking the day off. Um probably going to see Ghostbusters with the fam. And if you're not familiar with who you're seeing, hearing here on the podcast, my name again is Ian McLaren, a lifelong Bruins fan. I've been writing about this team for various outlets for 20 something years now, covered the NHL full time for five years uh, with the score. And I've been hosting this podcast since 2019 where the Bruins have had Quite a few tussles with the Tampa Bay Lightning in that time. And they came out on the wrong end of things last night, losing 3-1 to the Tampa Bay Lightning. And it's one of those trap games that you look at the schedule and you see they're coming off an emotional game the night prior against the Tampa Bay Light, or sorry, against the Florida Panthers going to Tampa. You see that they were a bit gassed, didn't quite have their best effort, and they lose 3-1 to thanks to goals from Mitchell Chaffee, Braden Point, and then an empty netter from Nikita Kucherov to steal the deal with about 27 seconds left. Now... Without that empty net goal, it's only a 2-1 game, so it seems pretty close. The Bruins did indeed keep it close, but the underlying numbers were very much in favor of the the, the Lightning in this one. They had 61.4% of the all shot attempts in this one. I'm oh, sorry, that's at 5-on-5. Five five. They had 60% of the shots at 5-on-5. Five five, 77.5% of the scoring chances. of the high danger chances and it's a bit of a miracle that this one wasn't even more tilted in Tampa's favor considering uh, those numbers in all situations not much better Tampa had 56.6% of the shot attempts they outshot the Bruins 31-24 scoring chances were 33-12 and the Bruins only mustered five High danger chances in this one compared to 13 for Tampa. Full credit to Linus Allmark for keeping the Bruins in this one. Uh, He stopped 28 of 30 shots for a 933 safe percentage. Uh, The other end of the ice, however, Andre Vasilevsky was just that much better. 23 shots. Sorry, 23 saves on 24 shots for a 958 save percentage. The only Bruin that was able to beat him on this night was Danton Heinen, who scored his 15th goal of the season. Again, cannot say enough about Danton Heinen and what he's been able to contribute to this team after coming in on a PTO in training camp, 
not having a deal signed as the season began, and then joining the lineup later in October, early in November. He's been such a contributing member. He's got one of the best value contracts in the NHL. In fact, I looked at Cap Friendly this morning. Cost per point among players with standard NHL contracts, not entry-level guys, but just your standard contract. He is indeed fifth, I believe, with uh, Jonathan Drouin being the best value deal. James Van Riemsdyk is still way up there, but he had a a bit of a rough re-entry into the lineup. He had less than 10 minutes of ice time. Uh, He took a penalty. He was a minus one. And was that enough to bump him back out of the lineup in favor of Jacob Lauko? Or will Jim Montgomery kind of give him the benefit of the doubt? He had been sick. He missed a few games. Maybe that's shaken off the rust. And we'll see if he's back in the lineup for Saturday's game against the Washington Capitals. But again, just kind of a a classic trap game. When you look at the schedule and say, that's going to be tough. They just beat the Panthers in an emotional game the other night. Quick turnaround, back-to-back. Tampa was more rested. And Vasilevsky, who's had an up-and-down season, had one of his better performances stopping those shots. Although, again, he didn't really get tested all that much because the Bruins mustered only five high danger chances. Uh, Jake DeBrusque led the way with three shots on goal. Bunch of guys had a couple shots as well, but kind of a, a, a sleepy night for the Bruins as they failed to clinch a playoff spot and allowed Tampa to make up some ground and sneak back into perhaps top three in the Atlantic division. We'll talk about that as we look at the power rankings. The Bruins could have clinched a playoff berth with a single point. They do remain two points ahead of Florida for first in the Atlantic, but Florida now has two games in hand. Jim Montgomery said, didn't really think either team was on top of their game. Um... Tampa had been coming off a Western Conference road trip. They weren't as sharp as they've been. The intensity and the motion of the game was not the same as it was in Florida. Bruins couldn't rise as high in the moment as the Lightning. David Pasternak called it a tough loss. The Bruins weren't at their best. Didn't deserve to win, he said. The outcome is as it should be. Uh, They couldn't get it going on the power play. They couldn't um, get in the zone with Allmark pulled in the six-on-five situation. Uh, Allmark, to his credit, kind of taken on this one. He said he's letting in one too many. When your team's only scoring one goal, if the bar is two, that's one too many, then um, he did admit that he was kind of speaking emotionally after the game, kind of frustrated, and... uh, You'll take a better look at it today and see what they can do in order to um, get back on the right track for Saturday's game against the Washington Capitals, which we will preview later on in the podcast. Coming up, we are going to take a look at the latest Locked On Power Rankings, see where the Bruins rank, and discuss perhaps a bit of a shift in the Atlantic Division playoff structure with Tampa slowly moving up here on the Toronto Maple Leafs. Let's talk about FanDuel here for a moment, where you can say goodbye to busted brackets because FanDuel lets you bet on every game of the ongoing college basketball tournament. Whether you're betting on a big upset or a one seed, it's time to go dancing on America's number one sportsbook. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins. Just visit fanduel.com slash locked on to bet on college hoops or NHL, NBA, MLB, opening day until they cut down those nets on college hoops and all season long in the other sports. 200 bucks to use on point spreads, money lines. Even pick who's going to win it all. 200 bucks in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins at fanduel.com slash locked on. 
Thank you so much once again for making Locked On Bruins part of your daily routine, free and available on your favorite podcast app and on YouTube. And while you're on YouTube, check out Locked On Sports Today, a free 24-7 streaming channel programmed for you every day to bring you the biggest stories all across the sports world. Locked On Sports Today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news, streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. This week on the Locked On NHL Network Power Rankings, we voted on teams 1 through 32, kind of ranking the uh, Stanley Cup favorites, hopefuls. And uh, I'll share my screen here so that you can see exactly where the Bruins rank this week. And um, here we are. Boston coming in right now, seventh on this list. Behind the Florida Panthers, the Colorado Avalanche, the New York Rangers, the Vancouver Canucks, Carolina Hurricanes, and Dallas Stars. And just ahead of Connor McDavid and the Edmonton Oilers, the Winnipeg Jets, and the Toronto Maple Leafs rounding out the top 10. This is who Locked On NHL hosts believe have the upper hand when it comes to Stanley Cup contention. Now, the Bruins did just beat the Panthers the other night. And, you know, there's a real race for the President's Trophy at the moment with a bunch of teams uh, vying for top spot. But to say that the Bruins shouldn't be ahead of the Panthers, I mean, I don't know. The vote was made prior to um, last night's game against Tampa, so that's some context there. Right now, let's just update the real standings and take a look at what's going on there. The New York Rangers, first place overall with 100 points, followed by the Stars and Bruins at 99 points. However, the Bruins. Because they have fewer regulation wins than a lot of these top teams. They have, you know, the highest amount of loser points in the NHL this season with 15 overtime shootout losses. They're 42, 17, and 15 overall. In real terms, that's 42 wins and 32 losses. And I think it was Kevin Paul DuPont who pointed out today that since they're Pre Thanksgiving start of like 14, 1, and 3. They're an even 28 and 28. And so if you look at point percentage, the Bruins are actually sixth overall at the moment behind New York, Vancouver, Dallas, Florida, and Colorado. So I guess seventh place. Uh, I always look at point percentage as an indicator. And you can probably bump them down because a lot of those points they have amassed this season have come in losses. And you can't really ignore that. In terms of regulation wins, the Bruins are well behind trailing even the Nashville Predators who have been red, red hot as of late. So are they really among the contenders? Well, once you get into the playoffs, truly anything can happen, as we've seen. And while the assumption has been the Bruins, you know, finish in first and they play one of the wild card teams, or they bump down to second and play the Toronto Maple Leafs. Well, don't look now, but the Tampa Bay Lightning are just two points back of Toronto for third in the Atlantic, albeit with Toronto holding a game in hand. So Toronto still better in terms of points and point percentage, but they're slumping a bit. They're five, four and one over their past 10. They've lost two in a row. Tampa streaking at eight, one and one. When you look at the matchups this season, the Bruins, you know, most recently beating Toronto by a pair of four to one scores, the lightning, beating Boston last night and kind of having their number. Um, it, it's really a pick your poison when it comes to who 
you want to play in the first round. If the season ended right now, Boston would be in the uh, second in the Eastern Conference. They'd be playing the first wildcard team, and that would be the Tampa Bay Lightning. So there's a good chance they could play the Lightning, even if they do finish in first place, which I'm thinking, you know, isn't super likely based on they have a very tough schedule down the stretch. And the Panthers are really, really coming on here, um, despite the loss to Boston the other night. And they have two games in hand, two more games to play than the Bruins, who only have eight games left on their schedule. In fact, the Bruins have played the most out of any team in the NHL so far at 74 games, meaning despite the fact they had the second most points, again, their point percentage is trailing Colorado, Florida, Dallas, Vancouver, and the Rangers. And it's unlikely that they're going to finish in first. First overall, that's totally fine, of course. Uh, they might not finish first in the Atlantic. Very likely still, however, that they will have home ice advantage in round one because they are 12 points up on Tampa and 10 points up on the Toronto Maple Leafs. So they finished strong here. They should be able to hold on to um, home ice advantage in round one. And in fact, even though they're not playing tonight, they could clinch a playoff spot if the Detroit Red Wings lose to the Carolina Hurricanes in any fashion. So that is a game to keep an eye on. Uh, they could also clinch if the Philadelphia Flyers lose to the Montreal Canadiens in regulation. So keep an eye on Detroit, Carolina tonight, also Philly, Montreal. If Detroit loses to Carolina in regulation, in overtime, in a shootout, Boston will clinch. If the Flyers lose to the Canadiens in regulation, then the Bruins will clinch. And that could take some pressure off as they prepare for their next game, which will be Saturday against Washington. And uh, we'll preview that one here as the podcast continues. Passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. They have over 122 million parts for your ride, and you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. With the eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit every time or your money back. With eBay Motors, you're burning rubber and not cash. Eligible items only, exclusions do apply, and the eBay Guaranteed Fit is available only to U.S. customers. But with all the parts you need at the prices you want, turn your car into the MVP and bring home a win with ebaymotors.com. All right, the Bruins have a couple days off here, and I wouldn't be surprised if they are back in Boston and will practice at home uh, tomorrow before traveling to Washington for a game against the Capitals on Saturday. And that will probably be the case after that one as well, because between Saturday and their next game, there's a two day break. They're off Sunday and Monday before going and playing those aforementioned predators in Nashville on Tuesday. When it comes to this uh, Capitals game, well, the Capitals will be in action tonight. So the Bruins will have a bit more rest. They are playing uh, Toronto, in fact, tonight. And heading into this one, here is the skinny on the Washington Capitals. They somehow are in the playoff picture despite having uh, one of the worst goal differentials in the conference. They have a goal differential of minus 26, which is worse than the Ottawa Senators, the Philadelphia Flyers, the New Jersey Devils, the Pittsburgh Penguins. Buffalo Sabres and uh, the Detroit Red Wings, all of whom are 
outside the playoff picture at the moment. The Capitals have 81 points through 71 games. They're two up on Detroit. Despite the fact Detroit has a plus five goal differential and the Capitals are at minus 26. How is that even possible? They're seven and three over their last 10. They've won three in a row. Charlie Lindgren has been very good for them. And net uh, Alex Ovechkin has turned things on. He's got seven goals over his last uh, five games. And Dylan Strom has nine points. Longtime listeners of the podcast will remember I was very keen on the Bruins trying to pick up Dylan Strom when he was available, uh, made available while he was with Chicago, after Chicago. They didn't make it happen, and now he's thriving with the Washington Capitals. Uh, Washington still, though, only a 27th-ranked offense, 2.73 goals per game. Defense is not spectacular. 18th at 3.1 goals allowed per game. Even their power play isn't that great. They're ranked 17th. Special teams, penalty kill, they're 18th. They're 30th ranked team in terms of the face-off circle. I don't know how this team is doing it, but they're right there in the thick of the playoff race. And, uh, yeah, sometimes hockey is just weird like that. So, Keep an eye on Toronto, Washington tonight to get uh, a, a view of what we can expect the Bruins to face on Saturday. The Bruins having two days off here to get ready and regroup from what was a short but grueling road trip down in Florida. As I mentioned, I'll be off tomorrow for Good Friday. If the Bruins do clinch, uh, be sure to be subscribed to the YouTube page as I'll, I'll post a short over there. And if anything major happens with the Bruins, of course, we'll jump on and do an emergency pod and uh, and the like. But for now, thank you so much for joining me on the podcast today. Thank you for all the support through the season so far. It's crazy to think that next time we chat, it'll be April. The playoffs will be on the horizon. Uh, but it's going by quick. And uh, I do appreciate the daily support, especially from those of you who are regular downloaders and commenters on on YouTube, especially. Uh, Don't think I don't see that, even if I don't have necessarily time to respond to each and every uh, each and every comment. Um, Yeah, please do take care of yourselves, friends. Hug your loved ones here over the holiday. Yeah, obviously, Easter means different things to different people, but. Um, it's a time to yeah enjoy the signs of spring, to watch some baseball as well, to spend some time with family and uh, go hunting for Easter eggs and all that. So please do take care of yourselves, take care of each other. We'll talk to you again here next time on Locked On Boston Bruins, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your favorite team every single day.